CAN stands for Control Area Network. And this communication protocol is widely used in automotive applications because of its bus topology, differential robust communication against noisy environments, half duplex and asynchronous communication protocol, and stunning fault confinement. Yeah, that's right, it has many features like this. Let's see about those one by one. CAN communication was invented by Robert Bosch in 1986. First, let's see what is so special in the CAN which makes it so famous for automotive applications. When we look inside a car, there are a lot of devices connected to each other. Let's take an example of the dashboard. We have an ignition control unit, transmission control, lighting system, airbag control unit, infotainment display and many more such systems connected together. Now let's imagine these systems are connected to the dashboard with a lot of wires. If that's the case, there would be a star topology where all the devices are connected individually to the dashboard like this, which makes the network complex and very messy. There will be a lot of wires on the dashboard and it would be difficult to figure out the fault in the hardware if there occurs any. To avoid this complexity, the engineers need a bus topology based communication protocol, where just few wires connect multiple devices together and CAN communication is one of those topologies. All the devices are connected to the CAN bus, which has only two communication lines in the name of CAN high and CAN low. One of the biggest advantage of CAN communication is that when even a single device gets disconnected or gets corrupted while communicating, the rest of the network is still intact and working in normal conditions. Now let's say if it is a star topology and the dashboard gets knocked out, then the whole communication network would malfunction. Well, it is clear why bus topology is preferred while designing a robust CAN protocol. Now we'll see how this CAN communication works. In this communication, there is no dictator or in the technical words, there is no requirement of master or host. That means there is no dependency on any central controller which monitors the communication network. Let's imagine there is a master in the vehicular dashboard which monitors all the systems we have seen earlier. That controller would have to monitor all of these devices and the communication even though the subsystems want to talk to each other without any interference from the master. Well, how can communication be beneficial here? The CAN bus provides one single platform to each device. Whoever wants to communicate can just put up the message on the bus and this message can be delivered to each device. Let's understand about the communication using real world example. When we wish to talk to a person, we first try to call on his mobile number. Other person has to answer the call and establish the connection. Once a connection is established, both people can transmit, receive and process the data. But for this successful communication, connections must be intact and be monitored. If a call is disconnected, the communication is disturbed. Bluetooth also works like in a similar way. We pair, we pair our cell phone to speaker, establish a connection, and then we can listen to music. But message based protocols like CAN are different. Let's understand this with the help of an WhatsApp group. The name of the WhatsApp group is let's say Avengers. Now Iron Man sends a message to the group addressing Thor. But how would Thor know that Iron Man sent this message? Well, from his phone number, right? There are all other Avengers in the group who are reading this message. But it is only addressed to Thor. And now he will respond to that text. If you compare this analogy with CAN communication, the CAN bus is the WhatsApp group. Thor and Iron Man are the subsystems connected to the CAN bus. The phone number of Iron Man is the message ID. When subsystem A sends a message with the unique CAN ID on the CAN bus addressing to subsystem B, 
the CAN message is received and read by all of the other devices connected to the bus. But subsystem B only responds to that message and takes the necessary action accordingly. CAN communication is a half duplex communication protocol. That means only one device is able to send the data message on the bus at a time. CAN is an asynchronous communication protocol. We already saw about the asynchronous communication protocol in this video with an amazing analogy. Please check this video out to know more about it. Basically, the clocks of all subsystems don't need to be connected together in asynchronous communication. But there needs to be a common baud rate associated with the communicating devices. All the systems should be tuned to this common baud rate. The maximum data rate of a CAN is 1 Mbps and data can travel up to 40 meters. There are multiple data rates as well which are 100 Kbps, 250 Kbps, 500 Kbps etc. Which depends on the wire length and characteristics. CAN is a differential two-wired communication. We know how a car's working environment is. Car travels on a road and during this time, there are a lot of vibrations occurring in the car due to numerous mechanical parts, road, etc. Also, there are other electronic systems in the vehicle which give rise to noise and create electromagnetic interference. This EMI disturbs the signals flowing inside the electronics. Well, there are two types of signal data transmission which are single-ended signaling and differential signaling. In single-ended signals, the ones and zeros are represented by a specific voltage levels like 0 to 3.3 volts or 0 to 5 volts. If we use single-ended signals for data transmission in CAN, the EMI present in the environment will corrupt the signal very badly. And if the signal gets corrupted, then the data interpretation would be very difficult for the internal drivers of the communication devices. What if we use differential signals for this data transmission? And how would they help? A differential signal is a method for transmitting electronic information using two complementary signals. It sends the data signal as a differential pair of the signals. This data is transmitted to the twisted pair conductors. Imagine if there is an EMI introduced on this CAN bus. This noise affects both the wires equally. So even if the signal in the wire are corrupted due to noise, the difference between two differential lines will be the same. And the receiver collects this difference between two transmission lines by comparing the voltage levels between them. This is how, even though there is noise in the system, the data flowing to the CAN communication lines doesn't get affected. Well, after all of that, even if the data gets corrupted due to any reason, the CAN communication provides CRC, which is cyclic redundancy check. This CRC can be used to detect the bit flips from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, and reports error using an error frame on the bus. When this error frame is received by the transmitter, it sends the data again. Along with that, the CAN protocol has an error confinement mechanism, which enables nodes connected to the bus to detect the errors and stay off from the bus in any noisy environment. We'll see about those in detail in coming videos. So due to all of these features, the CAN protocol is robust and most useful in the automotive environment as well as in the industrial applications. Well, that's all about it. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.